I serve the people of the United States and with the Army, Marine, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard guidance. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a friend behind. Today we're here to honor several men and women who have gone before us and have already been laid to rest here at Riverside National Cemetery since last Wednesday. These are called direct burials and normally what happens is they are not, uh, they have no family and the county public administrator or sheriff coroner or whatever the individual county has gets them prepared for burial and ships them straight out to the cemetery for burial. Others are remains that have been located or found or uh, families just don't want to have them in the house anymore and they stop them uh, at the office and, and leave them there and uh, for burial. Others we found in the past have just been left at the main gate for some of the first person to come through can stop and pick them up. It, uh, but all of these men and women have been checked. All of them are military, honorably discharged military. We know that they served a portion of their life honorably in defending this country from all enemies from within and from without. We may not know a whole lot about them, but we do know that at least they showed that much honor. And if you can show that much honor to your country, Chances are you're a pretty good guy to the surrounding groups that you uh, uh, associate with. We don't always know why they become separated from their family. Sometimes it's the family's situation. Sometimes it's they've outlived their families. Uh, one of the gentlemen we had last week, I found he was like 94 years old. He had served in. World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. I don't know what happened on one, but one enlistment shows he was a sergeant first class, and next one enlistment shows he was a private. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, like your career, huh? <laughs> Good on you, Bill. Sounded like a Marine. <laughs> no, so. He never quit the military. He may have gotten in some trouble, but he never quit. He stayed there. These guys, uh, some of these guys have some fairly interesting backgrounds. Uh, many of them have come from foreign countries and uh, look and we'll see how can they become an American citizen on the fast track. Well, by joining the military, uh, you can do that. I don't think the Marines take non citizens what the Army does, and I think the Air Force does. They, they uh, are fast-track to uh, American citizenship, and this is what a lot of people do. And so maybe they have a motive such as that, maybe, but they still come and serve this country. They don't wave any other flag, they wave the United States flag. Today we are honoring Ambrose McMullen, United States Army, James Smith, United States Army, Jack Treadwell, United States Navy, Willie Adams, United States Army, Norman Greenwood, United States Air Force, Edward Joyner, United States Army. Arthur Alexander, United States Army. Tony Prantel, United States Army. Gregory Glass, United States Army. And Edward Chevalier, United States Army. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Chaplain Raj. Roger, and uh, I'd just like to honor these folks. 
that, the names we just read. And uh, I want to indicate one thing, one day our name is going to be on that very list as well. So, uh, the question is, is, is uh, Christ risen? The hope of the resurrection. And uh, I'd like to go ahead and say a little prayer and then uh, I'll read a little scripture. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day, Lord. And we just ask, and we hope that these that these folks have been resurrected. And we just ask now that you go before us, I ask a special blessing upon the people here. Just bless and keep them, Lord, and help us to under, understand the truth uh, that only is provided in and through you. We pray for the United States and its military, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be in chapter 15. I can get this uh, <coughs> roll back on straight. And uh, the word of the Lord says this. The risen Christ, our hope. Now if it's Christ has preached that he has been risen from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he has raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished, like the folks we're honoring today and, and the previous folks, our family members. We're all reaching that age to where my life is in my path. I'm looking for the future of eternity. My fleshly life is coming to an end. There are also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all men the most pitiful. The last enemy destroyed. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For, the, for since by man came death, by man, with the capital M, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming, then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign till he puts all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted by the Father. He's the only acceptable payment for our sins. Through the, through the, uh, the, the cross and the crucifixion, there's no other payment acceptable. And he made it for you and I, if we accept him and that payment. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be in all in all. We are still living. We have a hope of the resurrection. If the folks that passed, didn't have that hope. 
didn't know the Lord Jesus personally, then they don't have the hope of the resurrection through the crucifixion of Christ on the cross. You and I still have that opportunity. And I truly hope that you take it. Because we're born into this life physically, but then there's a rebirth, a born again, if you will. Spiritual birth has to take place. Because once we sin, we are spiritually dead. It separates us from the Lord himself. I'd like to thank you for letting me share. And may God bless the United States of America. Amen. Hoorah. That's our name. Okay, and as I said, we have no burials coming out today. So uh, we won't be gathering back at the burial site. But I want you to keep in mind that when we're at the burial site or near the burial site, to keep your um, laughter and frivolity down and uh, not quite so boisterous in some of your conversations. There are other people that are there and they've just lost somebody uh, dear to them and they may not appreciate some of the levity that we have even though we are honoring our brothers and sisters they, they may not see it the same way we do and for the two young men and the other young men around the world here in the united states that are training we're getting ready to train to protect this country. You're joining one hell of a fellowship. You've got brothers and sisters everywhere. We have supporters everywhere. And remember, as George Patton says, we don't train you to die for your country. We train you to make the other guy die for his country. Amen. So you guys, keep it up. Yeah, <laughs> If we cannot do him honor while well, he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, Our country is in mourning. A soldier died today. Thank all of you for being here.